Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Pack Gaming Man here, joining you all once again to discuss another chapter in the history of console gaming. Usually on here, we look back through time and look into the history of various systems from gaming's past. Today, however, we are going to change that up a bit and instead look at the console that was announced to be in the works for a future release as recently as January of this year. In fact, the console in question today is reportedly no ordinary system and is even touted to be the most powerful console ever conceived. This is a platform that is said to be so technologically advanced that it will even surpass the capabilities of the Sony PlayStation 5. So with this in mind, let us go back and look at everything we already know about this system and the possibilities of the plans for this device to actually come to fruition. This ladies and gentlemen is the insane story of the Madbox, the Sony PlayStation 5 Destroyer. To begin today's retrospective we have to go back 9 months ago to January the 2nd 2019. On this fateful day, a gentleman known as Ian Bell would wake up and tweet out to the world that The Mad Box is coming! A bizarre statement that got a lot of people within the gaming community talking and thinking. In regards to Ian himself, the man is the CEO of a company known as Slightly Mad Studios and as a result statements regarding the Mad Box would later start servicing on the Slightly Mad Studios official social media accounts which would include Mr. Ian Bell claiming that the Madbox is the world's future most powerful game console. By 3.20pm of that same day, the CEO would send out a tweet from his personal account once again, this time stating the following. What is the Madbox? It's the most powerful console ever built. It's literally mad. You want 4K? You want VR at 60 frames per second? You want a full engine for free to develop your games on it? You have it. This crazy claim instantly got a lot of people talking, and as a result, many people were asking the CEO questions about this device, and as a result, he was quick to respond. The account at Thoro Tweets replied to Mr. Bell's tweet with the following response. Wait, that's not right, is it? Isn't it 90 or 120 frames per second proper? I swear 60 per eye plus reprojection to hit 120 frames per second was the other route. From this, Mr. Bell would cockily reply stating, It's right. When your console can run at 120 frames per second, we're not playing around here. This is beyond next gen. For too long have subtle iterations been accepted. Time to raise the bar sub Substantially, smiley face. In regards to the hype train surrounding this device, Bell would go on to mention that the Madbox will support most major VR headsets and those upcoming, and the specs will be the equivalent to a very fast PC two years from now. He also stated that we're in early talks with manufacturers of components, so we can't say much more right now, other than we have the design specs out in detail. So in just the first couple of days, there was a lot of fighting talk from Slightly Mad Studios regarding this piece of proposed hardware. But first, before we move on, who the bloody hell are Slightly Mad Studios anyway? And why do they think they are capable of taking on Sony, Nintendo and Microsoft? Well, let's dig a little deeper and find out. Slightly Mad Studios is an independent British video game company established in 2009 and headquartered in London. The company operates in a less traditional manner than that of many others and as a result has a distributed development structure with developers living across the world and working remotely. Their first claim to fame arrived the year the company was founded when they worked alongside EA to produce Need for Speed Shift. In fact, since then the company's entire repertoire up until the CEO's tweets consisted solely of developing racing games, with their most well-known effort being Project Cars which would go on to be published by Namco Bandai. In terms of the company themselves, prior to the Madbox's development announcement, the studio has had no prior experience developing a game console, let alone the most powerful platform in the world. 
So what was it that drove and influenced such an ambitious decision? Well, according to Mr. Bell, he said that we think the industry is a little too much of a monopoly or a micro oligopoly. He would go on to explain that we think competition is healthy and we have the required hardware contacts to be able to bring something epic to fruition based on our designs. Ian went on to explain that there would be much more information to share over the coming weeks, but could guarantee that the system would be competitive with upcoming console prices. With regards to the promise of new information arriving quickly, Ian was true to his word, as just five days later on January the 7th 2019, the first conceptual art of the new platform's casing would arrive. The images depicted designs similar to the case of many high-end gaming PC towers, featuring an M-shaped form factor, bright neon colours and the Mad Studios logo huge and emblazoned across them. Upon the publishing of these images though, Bell did state that these were not final designs and were no more than just conceptual art. That same day, Bell would go on to tweet out more conceptual art, such as the design featured within the thumbnail of this video. To be fair, I think this design is absolutely beautiful and certainly looks a lot more aesthetically pleasing on the eye than the likes of the existing PlayStation 4 and Xbox One for example. This one really is a sleek looking design choice. Further, information would trickle out regarding the mental box that promised virtual reality gaming, an intriguing design and an impressive specification, which would even include a proposed release time frame of around the year 2022. Going forward, news on the Madbox front would peter out for a few months. That was until April of this year when news broke that Slightly Mad Studios had been forced to withdraw the trademark filing for the name of this system. It turns out that this move by the studio was taken as a result of a French company known as Madbox opposing the console's trademarking due to the possibility of the name causing confusion with the public. Obviously, all this info strongly points to the conclusion that in all likelihood that the studio will likely rename their system if it ever actually does see a release. Personally, I would recommend giving the system a British name what about the Brexit box for example? It is a platform that is intended to be a superpower that competes on the world stage after all. Anyway, with regards to a release, as of May 2019, the possibility of the Brexit box became a reality had become doubtful at very best. In regards to this situation, Mr. Bell places the blame directly with Google in regards to the potential demise of this platform. Basically, the whole thing is now in question as a result of the announcement of the upcoming Google Stadia streaming platform. The Stadia, with its new take on how games should be experienced in the future, has apparently spooked investors of the system. In regards to this, Bell is quoted to have said, Google's announcement of Stadia hasn't helped the project with our investors. We had some solid investment lined up, but Google saying the future of gaming isn't in a box hasn't done us any favours. Two investors pulled out after the announcement of the Stadia. All I can say at this stage is the future of the project is questionable. Don't expect any updates relating to our next generation plans this time. In regards to the Madbox, this is the whole story of the platform's history that has surfaced so far. And from what we know, there is a strong possibility that the announcement of the Stadia could very well be the final chapter in this platform's short history. In terms of powerful British consoles, at this moment in time, the Madbox appears to be little more than vaporware. A few months ago, Slightly Mad Studios promised the public the world, but now have rescinded such claims and have given off the impression that we will never see the mad box. Once again, a bit like Brexit itself, I guess mad box means mad box. In terms of where British game consoles rank, even the Conix multi-system was much closer to seeing the light of day than this. And in terms of power, considering the platform does not appear to exist in any form, it is outranked in capabilities by other British design consoles such as the Atari Jaguar, Amstrad GX4000 and even the embarrassing BBC Bridge Companion. Ugh. 
So, all in all, I will upload an update to this video if more information on this mysterious platform ever surfaces. But for now, this is all I have to offer on this matter. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the insane story of the Mad Box. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this whole debacle. Finally, to conclude this video, my channel Top Pack Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing Patreon benefactors who really do relieve an element of stress from my life and help encourage me to get videos out so regularly. So a huge thank you and a massive shout out to Carl Johnson, Suzuka Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Sebastian the Great, Synth Spaces, Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Quang DX, Sponge Matt B, Michael Baker, Hans Christian, Computer Man, Antonio Rosa Rodriguez and all of my other patrons. Thank you all so bloody much.